Hello and welcome to my 50th video introducing my book Debugging Shakespeare. In the last video we looked at Sir John Garrard and Sir Moulton Garrard of Dorney Court as well as William Lambard of Item Moat. In this video we're going to look at the enigmatic character of the curate Henry Peacham the Elder and his alleged son of the same name who was a poet and a writer writing about the education of gentlemen. From my earlier videos you will have realized that I believe the bard did not die until around the year 1646 and was born earlier than claimed around the year 1540. So it will come as no surprise to hear me say that I believe both Henry Peacham the Younger and Henry Peacham the Elder are both likely aliases of the bard. Looking first at the elder Henry Peacham, we note that he was allegedly a curate or parish priest. There are almost no records of the surname Peacham to be found in this era, but if we consider anagrams of Henry Peacham, we can derive he preach many, which seems appropriate for a priest. Peacham may have been the first to coin the phrase pragmatographia, which describes what happens when a theatre audience is taken outside of itself, metaphorically, through exposition, an event that certainly occurs in many Shakespearean plays, including by Horatio in Hamlet. Peacham's alleged son, Henry Peacham the Younger, was, according to Wikipedia, a schoolmaster at Kim Bolton Grammar School in Cambridgeshire, and, like his likely fellow aliases, Geoffrey Whitney, Joris Hofnagel, Gabriel Rollohagen, and Francis Qualls produced an emblem book entitled Minerva Britanna. Although there is little other collaborative evidence for Peacham being an alias of the Bard, there is nonetheless an original manuscript held at Longleat, which alludes to the Bard's play Titus Andronicus. It is known as the Peacham drawing and illustrates one moment in the play and includes some stage directions, um, allegedly invented stage directions. The manuscript is signed Henricus Peacham and a date that's taken to be 1595. There is some contention regarding certain details of the document, but one thing that is, that is certain is that its paper contains a Ewer watermark discovered by Harold Metz in 1985. I conclude that, taken together with the other evidence, including similar watermarks in the John Ryland's Dorfold Hall monuments and elsewhere, this fact suggests quite strongly that the manuscript is genuine and suggests this being a bard alias. Thank you for watching. There will be many more videos like this in the near future. The only way to get a full appreciation of who the bard really was is to buy my book. It is available only on Shopify. Please scan the QR code shown with your mobile and you will have a direct link to Shopify. Thank you.